You are about to view a demonstration of a nurse caring for a patient who is status post a transurethral resection of the prostate. The patient requires continuous bladder irrigation with a three-way indwelling urinary catheter. While watching the demonstration, please observe how you can incorporate the six core values of the Connecticut Community College nursing program into your patient interactions and care. The six core values are caring, holistic care, critical thinking, professionalism, communication, and safe and competent care. I'm Mr. Miller. My name is Megan. I'm going to be the nurse who's caring for you today. Can you please tell me your full name and your date of birth? Of course, Megan. My name is George Miller and my birthday is January 20th, 1961. All right, how did you sleep? Not too bad. Surprisingly, the catheter didn't bother me too much during the night. Good, that's good to hear. Um, I think you're gonna be happy to hear that the doctor has advanced your diet, so you get to have actual breakfast today. That's really great news. I could definitely go for some bacon and eggs. I'm sure you can. So um, I'm gonna come back in a few minutes and do a thorough head to toe assessment. But in the meantime, is there anything that I can get you? Um, no, but I do have a question. I'm a little bit unclear as to exactly what this catheter is for and why it has these huge bags attached to it. Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, after somebody has had a transurethral resection of the prostate, they often receive continuous bladder irrigation, and that's what this setup is. It's also referred to as a three-way catheter irrigation system, okay? And um, the reason we call it that is because the catheter that you currently have has three channels, all right? So I'm gonna show you these three channels and what each of them are for, okay? So this first channel is for the infusion of the sterile solution that the physician has ordered. And this continuously irrigates the bladder. And the reason we have this is to prevent the formation of a clot after the surgery. The second channel is for the drainage of the solution that goes in and irrigates the bladder and then comes out into the gravity bag. And this third channel is for the inflation of the balloon that we inflate in order to hold the catheter in place in your bladder. Okay, so do you have any questions about this catheter itself? No, that all makes a lot of sense. But I'm also curious, why does it constantly feel like I have to urinate? Well, um, after a transurethral resection of the prostate, oftentimes patients will feel like they have the urge to urinate and it could be due to a number of things. One thing that it could be due to is the spasms um, of your bladder. The other is the catheter in place itself and the final reason is just irritation from the procedure that you had. Okay, the important thing as the patient is to remember not to pull or tug on that catheter because what can happen is it can cause further bleeding which could subsequently cause a clot that can block that catheter, which is what we're trying to avoid with the continuous bladder irrigation. Okay? That makes sense. Now, I also noticed after the procedure, this solution was running very fast, but now it seems to have slowed down quite a bit. Is that normal? Yes, that's a great question, and that is totally normal. This is always going to be constantly dripping. After surgery, what happened is that you were bleeding more, so the drip rate was faster. We base the drip rate based upon the color of the drainage that is coming into the gravity bag. So when you came out of surgery, you had a much faster drip, but that's because you had much darker drainage. Now that your drainage is much lighter, we were able to slow down the infusion per the physician orders. So my job is to look at the output, and I'm supposed to be assessing the amount as well as the color. So like I said, we base the drip rate off of the color, and right now you have a light pink, so that means that you're bleeding less. Now, it's also very important for me to be assessing how much drainage is coming out of that drainage bag. The amount of drainage in the drainage bag needs to be equal or slightly more than the amount of solution that is infusing. That being said, if it's not and I'm infusing, but not, you're not draining, what's happening is, is that that solution is, being, is staying in the bladder. Now that could be due to a kink in the equipment, so I would assess for kinks, or it could possibly be due to a clot in the bladder blocking that catheter, in which you'd need to be manually irrigated to break up that clot, which is what they did last night. So, um, do you have any questions regarding the big bags and the drainage? 
No, that all makes sense, but it's a lot of information. And I must admit, I'm a little nervous about going home with this catheter in place. So I am hoping, I did speak to the physician, I am hoping that we're able to stop the continuous bladder irrigation because you are bleeding less. And hopefully you'll be able to go home today with the catheter in place, but not with these bags. And we will go over thorough discharge instructions and home care of the catheter before I send you on your way. That sounds great. Okay, so is there anything that I can get you in the meantime? No, I think that's all. All right, breakfast will be here, so let's take it one step at a time, and I will be back soon. Here's your call bell in case you need anything. Thank you so much, Megan. Okay. Hi, Mr. Miller. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. All right, can you tell me your name and your date of birth? Sure. George Miller, January 20th, 1961. All right, let me take a look. Why are you nurses always asking me that? Because we need to clarify every time that we have the correct patient. All right, so we're gonna go over your discharge information and how to care for your catheter at home, okay? What we'll do is I will show you uh, everything you need to know about how to switch over to a different bag, and I will give you handouts to go home with because it is a lot of information, and then you will do a return teach back demonstration when your wife comes to ensure that you've understood everything, okay? Okay. All right, so the first thing I want to explain to you is that I'm going to be sending you home with two different bags. The first bag is going to be the gravity bag that you have had at the hospital. I'm going to send you home with a brand new one in order to reduce the likelihood of infection, okay? And I'm also going to be sending you home with what's known as a leg bag. Now the differences between these bags are that the gravity bag can be used at any time. Um, and that you wanna just ensure that the gravity bag is at all times below the level of your bladder, but still off of the floor. You never want the tubing or the bags to be touching the floor. As for the leg bag, you're only gonna be wearing the leg bag when you're up and about, and you can hide it under your clothing. You do not wanna wear the leg bag when you're sleeping, because what can happen is if your legs are elevated, all of that urine can back up into the tubing, back into the catheter, into your bladder, causing a ca catheter-associated urinary tract infection. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, before you do any care, catheter care, or care of your drainage systems, the first thing you want to do is wash your hands. So I'm going to go step out and wash my hands. Okay. Okay, Mr. Miller, so now I'm going to show you how we change from the gravity bag over to the leg bag. Okay? Okay. All right, so it's always a good idea to put a towel down in case you have any leaking of urine from the catheter site. Okay? Okay. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pinch this area, and you're going to want to make sure that you hold the pinch at all times. ensuring that you don't have that leak, okay? Okay. Now you're gonna take an alcohol swab and you're going to clean this outer area of the catheter, ensuring that you're still holding your pinch. You'll then take your leg bag and you're going to pop off the connector, making sure that the connection never touches anything to ensure that you do not get a urinary tract infection. You'll then be connected and you'll be able to attach your bag to your leg and hide it under your clothes. Now, as for emptying the bag, you're going to want to ensure that you empty it over a toilet and you take, detach it from your leg. But you're never going to want it to be above the level of your bladder. So this will be your pore spout right here. And what you're, when it's about halfway full, you will want you to empty it. So what you will do is you will turn this counterclockwise and allow it to drain completely. And then you'll close it. You can then take an alcohol swab and clean the outside all the while ensuring that the pore spout has never touched any other surface to reduce the likelihood of an infection. Okay? Okay. All right. So 
We want you to avoid having any urinary tract infections. So a couple of ways to avoid that are to one, ensure that you're always washing your hands prior to and after care. We'd like you to limit the amount of times that you're changing from your light bag to your gravity bag and making sure that you're performing proper catheter care, which includes making sure that you shower and do not take baths. You, when you clean the catheter site, you wanna clean it at least once a day with a mild soap and water, and you're gonna pat the area dry. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are pulling downward when cleaning and never pulling back up towards the catheter site as to limit the amount of bacteria entering the urethra, okay? Okay. Um, also, do not apply any ointments or creams unless provided by your urologist. You're gonna be following up with urology tomorrow, and when your wife comes, you can do the return back demonstration with the leg bag to the new clean gravity bag that I'll be giving you. Okay, sounds great. And I definitely wanna make sure I can take some of those handouts home so I can review them on my own. Okay, wonderful. So I have both of these handouts for you, and you can review these in the meantime while your wife gets here, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Here's your call bell, and if you need anything else, just ring in, but I'll be back shortly. Thanks, Megan. Okay, 